Welcome everybody to the NHI AA Division II playoff game where the number 13 seeded Kennedy Eagles sitting at 4, 9, and 1 in the regular season will take on the number 4 seeded Plymouth Bobcats finishing their regular season 12, 3, and 1. I'm Mike Sullivan alongside Paul Ferentz today and uh, a great day for soccer. Obviously we got the rain starting to come down here. This but, is fall uh, weather. It's what we do in the fall. Field hockey, soccer, football. And we battle the elements as we battle each other. And we have our, our first ever home playoff game hosted on this uh, beautiful soccer field we have here at Plymouth Regional High School, which is just a gorgeous campus to host any playoff event, any regular season event, and uh, very fortunate today to be hosting this uh, Division II first round playoff game. A fabulous venue. Uh, fans love it here. Of course, it's a great uh, soccer uh, field as well as lacrosse use, both guys and girls. So yeah, we got a brisk afternoon. Temperatures dropping. The rain is starting to come. It's going to be fabulous. We have people uh, <clears throat> showing up, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a nice crowd to support the Plymouth Bobcats. So Bobcats finishing their regular season at 12-3-1, uh, led by uh, nine seniors this year on this year's team. <clears throat> um, finishing number four seed. We know how important the top four seeds are come playoff time. Um, why is that so important when you get here to this to this to this point in the season? Well, we like home field advantage number one, and you have that uh, added edge having beaten the team previously. I think they're 0 and 2 against Kennett this year, but Kennett, a great rival, they show up ready to play. They're uh, a worthy opponent, and uh, that's why we're going to play the game, see what happens. But they're a tough group, and uh, they're here to win it to make their season a big success. So. It's going to be a great match. Bobcats are getting set to take the field along with the Kennedy Eagles. And the both teams are out there getting set for some action right now. We know uh, Bobcats led by senior captain Connor Nolan in his 25 goals this season. I think it might be 26. I'm not sure. But either way, he, is, uh, he makes it all happen. He is the hub. He uh, dishes it out if he's not scoring. He's a force to reckon with, and when they try to double team him, there are other people who have been contributing all year. So they got a good team working together. They're looking for each other. They're very patient in passing, and they, uh, they're playing really smart, smart soccer. They're ready to go. So the Bobcats are going to get the ball here to start the game. We have Connor Nolan uh, alongside, looks like number 22. <laughs> there. That's Ian Barker Ian we have, Barker, Tyler me. Mersch, that's a uh, forward attack. Matt Rosner, freshman Devlin Costa, closest to us, number 11. Having a great season, Devlin, for a freshman to step up the big kids. He's doing a great job, fitting in really well. So Connor's going to start by sending the ball to the deep corner, a tactic a lot of teams will use. It's going to result in a Kennett throw-in. Looks like they're going to put the pressure on right away. Keep it down this end. I know they want to get some quick scores in case the weather changes. So Bobcats will flick the ball back into their zone, looking to control it. Nolan has the ball in the middle. He's going to slip. Yep. The weather starting to come down as Slipping the rain already. falls. And ball sent to the outside to Matt Rosner. And it's going to be a Bobcat throw. -in. Tough tackle, but Plymouth has it. So again. Bobcats looking to gain control of the ball. Sends the ball to the 18. That ball is going to be controlled by the Kennett goalie. That ball took a difficult skip on the way out. Plymouth is being aggressive. They know they like to get a couple this half and then see if the weather is going to be the uh, almighty equalizer, which it often is. So they're really putting the pressure on. They're looking to be very aggressive right now. So we're less than a minute into the game here. Bobcats really are jumping all over the ball, look to have the first touch and really be the aggressor. Rosner comes out as they fight for position for the ball. And we've got a throw coming in. And the referees are going to give a kick to Kennett. After Call the push. Call the push. There. Well, good. Play it. Let him play. Keep it tight. This fella's big. Very tall. So the free kick will come out. Nice foot. Bob, the Kennett Eagle offense pushing for the first time. Again, Bobcats. Dan McLaughlin chases them to the corner beautifully, and they're going to play good D and get that ball right out. So Nolan will control the ball here. He's going to send it up to Devin Costa. Wisely stays out of the way and allows for the senior to do his work as he attacks the, the net for the first time. 
Pops back on his feet. And it's going to go out and it's going to be a Bobcat corner. It's supposed to be a Bobcat corner. They're going to call that a Kennett goal kick. It didn't go, didn't go Connor's way, but he'll be back down there again. You can count on it. He's Connor. pressing it. Number nine, Nolan, looking very aggressive to start the game here as the big goal kick is going to come out and that's going to stay in bounds. And a late whistle come in. It's going to be a Bobcat throw. I think the header must have been out of bounds. Yeah, he called it out of bounds. Late throw ins by Dan McLaughlin. So Mersh, the senior captain, taking the ball to the outside. He's going to look to attack from the corner here. Very aggressive. And the cross comes in, and this one's going to be a Bobcat corner kick. And it's starting to rain, uh, Mr. Sullivan. As you saw, Connor Nolan's early shot on net, which was a wise shot, just to see what type of bounce that the ball would take. And it did skip into the goalie. Weather can be a big factor in this sport. Cross this. from Mersh set to come in. It's going to be a high kick. And Bobcats are going to play that one out and look to attack. Send the ball back into the 18, controlled by Costa. It's going to be a Kenneth throw in. Plymouth defense is all up at midfield. They really want to keep the pressure on here. Figure they could put these guys away early. So the Eagles looking to attack here a little bit and unable to get anything as the Bobcats would control it and switch fields. First touch, very important today on this wet, rainy day. Yep. And it's a through ball sent out, and it's going to be controlled by Dylan Donahue. Wisely calls off the defense. Bobcats definitely the more aggressive team coming out here. We're, we're just about four minutes into this game, into the first half, as Costa's on the attack. Yeah, they're taking the initiative. It's their home field. They want to get it done early. I don't blame them. They got Kennett a little on their heels. But uh, they have two tough matches this year with Kennett. Yeah, both those games coming in September, one on September 1st, the other one on September 18th, resulting in two victories by the Bobcats, both two to one games. As Mersh getting set to take the corner, Bobcats attacking. It's a high kick, controlled. And a shot just off the mark. It's going to be a goal kick for Kennett. Liam Reese, good left foot. Comes out of the goal to play the field and doing very well this year. Plymouth is down two starters, as we know. Isaiah Vesey and uh, Danny Carey are both out. High that, kick by that, the Kennett goalie there. Ball's controlled by the Bobcat defense. And... A little pressure by the Kennan offense. Yeah, Thanks. number seven. Barker kicked the ball out of bounds wisely. So Kennan's got the ball deep into Bobcat territory here. They are getting set to take the throw in. And Bobcats will just kick it out of bounds and give up the, Kenner, the corner kick coming up for Kennan. Another, here's a scoring opportunity. Bobcat defense looking to get in the box and find somebody to defend to clear this ball out of here. It's Takes a miss. A nasty skip in the middle. Ross is going to bring the ball to the outside and looking to clear it. And the ball's controlled by Costa as he brings it out of the box. Very skilled freshman. A lot of poise. That was a He's dangerous send ball. Nolan up front to the left wing. And he does get out there. He's got the advantage. No call by the official. I think a good no call. As Nolan did have the advantage, was able to stay on his feet and continue going towards the net. He got a good, uh, he got a good bump there. Kept his poise. Definitely took him off the ball, but I think it was a good no call by the official because he had the advantage. It is going to be another run on by Nolan. Here comes Mersh. First to every ball so far today. Send Mersh down to the corner. 
Oh. Shot coming up from McLaughlin at the 18. Shots high, just off the post. And that was a good miss, as we say in golf. <laughs> a good miss, but uh, he, he didn't get all of it. Just off the top of the post. Good scoring opportunity. Bobcats are really attacking, so they're looking for that opening. Mersh, great pass there outside the 18-yard line, and McLaughlin put a good strike on it there, just high off the, off the crossbar. Kenny Coley been busy so far today on his feet. Yeah, I think the Kenny Coley's pretty experienced being a senior. Looks like a good athlete. So this rain was supposed to come anywhere from 12 to 4 today, and it uh, it waited right until kickoff started. Waited. And it's supposed to be one to two inches. Let's hope they're wrong. We're just at about the 7:30 mark here into the game. Can it throw in coming up? Bobcats looking to clear that ball outside the 18. Plenty of running room with Nolan up front. He's got some room here. It's going to be one on one with Nolan and the goalie. Ball squirts out. All right, Cameron, out the way. It's a great move by Connor. Connor Oop. looking to make a play to squeak it past the goalie. Ball took a skip. Ball got a little too much ahead of him. Got out too far and unable to make a play. I'll take one on one with Nolan versus goalie all day long. Wow. Yeah, they're really pushing, so I think the uh, the offense is in top shape here. See, Eagle defense has been pressed hard right from the opening kickoff of this game. Eagle throwing coming up. Bobcats really on the attack. Rain's coming down a little harder now. Plymouth really hasn't kept much control of the ball today other than just looking to send their fast forward up. And it's a through ball coming up and it's gonna be an offsides on Nolan. No, you're right. They're uh, not a lot of possession. They're just on the attack. Eagle free kick. A good call by the official. Got his feet taken out from under him. Bobcats controlling pretty much everything, including winning the ball out of the air. No bounces. High kick by McLaughlin. And it's looking to send their fast Good forwards ball. up front. Good ball. So Paul, what, type, what types of problems can the, the weather cause here? Well, you won't have your footing. Kids who have a, a real finesse game, dancing with the ball, are gonna be at a disadvantage and they're gonna have the footing they like. But it's a great equalizer, you know, and it's uh, important to get a goal early so you're not uh, on the field fighting uh, against the elements as you fight the team. That gives, I think, a team like Kennett a real advantage. They you can know, hold them off for as long as they can. In describing this team here, the Bobcat team, it's, it's, a, it's a skill, it's a very skilled team, but they do have some power. They play, they play with a pretty physical team um, that gets by on, on a lot of through balls that that uh, looking to attack with their speedy forwards, and uh, but they can play a controlled game, and haven't really had to do it too much today. No, they they could play a possession game, and there you're right, they do have the power. Dan McLaughlin and uh, will run right through you. They like winning those 50-50 balls, and they go hard, and so there is a lot of power on this team. But they uh, got to play smart here. So Reese is. Kenneth's always giving him a hard time. Looping back, we got a Kenneth free kick coming up, deep into Bobcat territory here. Bobcat defense looking to clear this ball out of here. It is going to be cleared out by Reese. Connor tried to pick that one off. The Plymouth defense is swarming. They're really going after it. So we've got Nolan coming up looking to attack here. No, no defenders on him, one on one. He's gonna tip it forward out to the left side. Crosses it back over, got a shot coming up here. That ball's gonna be tipped and cleared out. Oh. So Kennett now on the attack. Gonna send the ball up to the corner. The longer Kennett holds their own in this contest, the more confidence <laughs> they're gonna have, and they're gonna really wanna feel, you know, they feel like they could win it. 
to go Sam Ebner. What a great year he's had. Really improved every game. Sam Ebner, another one of those nine seniors, so successful this year, finishing the regular season 12-3-1, enough to earn the four seed in the Division II playoffs and what really is the first home playoff game for the Bobcat soccer program in since 2003, I believe. Nice move. Nolan on the attack, ball in the box. They're not calling it down there. And the physical game has already started for both teams and the officials not calling a whole lot of on the ball. Ball's gonna be sent out over the top and Donahue wisely calls him off. Sam Ebner, by the way, is a sophomore <laughs> and starting and playing quite well. So they got a nice core group of kids coming. Three youth programs down playing at Reese Field on Route 175, which has really supported the programs in the area. They got a lot of kids coming. There's a high kick. So we've got a free kick coming up for the Bobcats. And the rain is still coming. I don't know if you can see it on the cable. Something Bobcats have done well so far this year is scoring off of set pieces. This is another good opportunity. So Cameron Labrie in goal for Kennett is going to have a busy afternoon. Kick is sent out to the 18. And Costa is fighting, looking to keep the ball in his Rosner. Does. Got a cross coming out here. Nobody on the other end of it. It's a good play, good cross. They are knocking on the door, Mr. Sullivan, but it's just not happening yet. They gotta remain patient. It's another good ball. Bachman looking to attack here. Cross coming in. Intended for the freshman looking to attack and see if he can turn the ball upfield. Shielding the ball nicely. And ball still in, no call by the official. Now we have a whistle coming in. <laughs> Canada, Kenneth head coach not liking that call too much, coming all the way across the field. Yeah, the Bobcat Ian. set piece coming up. Cross is high, booming kick. Beautiful Nobody ball. on the other end, right to the goalie. Easy catch for Cameron Labrie. Another save. High kick by Labrie. And one bounce, and Bobcats controlling it. Sending it deep into Kennett territory. Kennett throw in coming up. Plymouth has got to remain patient. Play smart D. Not give up anything easy. And I think they're going to wear him down, if anything, because they really have uh, Kennett working hard. They do. The Bobcats have been on attack most of the day as the Rosner throw in goes to Costa looking to flick on to Nolan. And the Eagles wisely putting a guy on Nolan. So Kenneth, Kenneth defense doing a nice job, not allowing Nolan no. to get out front. I know he had the one one on one. Kenneth free kick coming up. They're holding their own on defense, Kenneth. But it looks like there's a little chink in the armor eventually. It's got to let loose. Plymouth just needs to continue to be patient here. Be patient. They've done so exactly. So far, they have. Reminded me of the start of the last week uh, John Stark game. John Stark came up with a seven game winning streak. Played him even, it looked like, first half. And then uh, Plymouth got a goal. They're playing all their seniors. It was senior day. In the second half, it was bang, 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 three goals in eight minutes. So maybe the floodgates will open up once they get that first one. 
playing hard. Kenneth's playing well, playing him tough. And Donahue is going to call him off as he easily slides into that one. Cease. <laughs> The rain continues to fall here. It looks like it's only picked up the pace. The rain is excellent for sliding, by the way. That's <laughs> one good advantage. Of course, divots of grass coming up as the high kick controlled by Nolan here in the middle and being pushed off the ball. And the Eagles have been very physical with Nolan so far. Ball really being played in the air for both teams. Really? And it's a pinball machine now down there. Controlled down by Costa, who turns it upfield. Has some room. They're looking to get there to the net and unable. So he keeps fighting his way up, and it's going to be a Bobcat throwing. Devlin's a freshman. He's got to get a little more meat on the bones. He's getting muscled a little, but he's got great finesse, great skill set playing with the big kids. Certainly has been playing very hard this afternoon in his first ever playoff game. As Bobcats look to control the ball and control play here, keeping the ball down on the ground, switching fields over to Rosner. They are being patient. Sending There's a ball. over the top and he slips and goes down. That could have been a goal. Kenneth's going to control the ball. They're looking to attack here. Got seven Bobcat defenders behind the ball and three Kenneth players looking to attack. Kenneth's being patient too. Shot coming out here for Kenneth. They're being patient. And the skip takes a skip across, and Donahue makes a nice play to bat it out of bounds for the Kenneth corner That's a kick. Nice save by Donahue. It looked like he might have lost his footing on the way over there and reached out to knock it out. But we have a corner, always dangerous corner. About 18.45 here into the first half. 0-0 zero, zero score. Bobcats on the attack. Cross coming in off the beautiful, corner. Beautiful ball. And still in the box, and it's going to be a Kennett goal. <laughs> Kennett takes a 1-0 lead here. Looked like he had 20 guys within a six-foot area bouncing around. Dylan couldn't reach it. And it uh, got you know, knocked right in. It's one of those. It's one of those halves where Bobcats really have controlled for the majority of the half, and they've been on the attack. Kenna gets their chance, and they do have the height advantage. Right and down that's there. It's clear we can see it out there, and uh, Almost, able to get the ball off the head of one of the Kenna players and take a one nothing lead. Dylan looked like he was boxed out. To use a basketball term, and he just couldn't reach it. About 18 guys in that box, and it uh. Well, Kenneth's going to make you earn it. No reason to panic. Plenty of time left. Kenneth's going to make you earn it. Kenneth takes a one nothing lead. You know, this this certainly, again, we talk about weather. Is, it looked like Nolan would have a scoring opportunity there. Plymouth has been in this position attack. before. Ball inside the box, and Bobcats are going to clear it. My goodness. That was incredible. Another cross coming in. And Rosner's going to clear the ball outside. To Mersh. No backing down from Tyler Mersh. He goes straight through you. He had Connor right down the field waiting it's for him. Liam Reese takes control of it. They're going to play it up the sideline. Bobcat's looking to settle in here a little bit. As they look to send Nolan. Yeah, he, it looked like if he let that go, it might have been an offsides, but he probably could have got away with it. Kennedy is back on the attack. They are putting Hirsch the pressure on. Is going to shield so the ball can go right to Donahue. Had me worried on that one. <laughs> Good ball. So a big kick from Donahue is going to send the ball back into Bobcat territory as Mersh heads it out to the right side to Costa. And ball sent out to the deep corner as the Kennett goalie is going to come out and play it. And he's playing with his feet. He wisely just kicks it out of bounds. Senior so. goalie, good move. See if Plymouth can capitalize. Come right back, make this. So Bobcats back on the attack here. Ball goes to looking to send Ebner to the flag, the corner flag, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds. Big throw in into the box. Come on, get the ball, get the ball. 
results in Kennett being able to clear it. It doesn't look like Kennett changed any strategies. They're not packing 10 in the box. They're not content with the one goal. They're going to play heads up. That's what happens. You get that first goal. Your confidence gets uh, building more and more. They feel they could play with these guys. Two think, tough games before. I think a big key here will be Bobcats being able to pop a goal in here before the half. It'd be nice. Score or race it and just pretend like the score is nothing, nothing. Exactly. Two minutes into the game here. Kennett has a 1-0 lead. And we have a card, a yellow card here on Plymouth. Dan McLaughlin going out. I didn't see what happened. I'll have to look at the instant replay. Did you see that? I'm not really sure where the card came from or what it was for, but the... Bobcat yellow card sends a Bobcat player to the sideline. Yeah, it looks like Dan, leaving, Dan McLaughlin's out. Leaving 10 guys on the field. So if you get a yellow card, you have to go out of the game. Looks like a mouth guard. He's running over to the sidelines. They are going to let him. Here, Here comes, comes Nathan Maves Moore, senior. Big, strong kid. He's going to be, a, be able to fill that spot quickly. He so Bobcats will play with 10 until Maves Moore can... Check himself into the game. On the next stop is the next Bobcat throw in. Oswald sends the ball back in as they look to control and attack again. And we got a quick throw coming up here for Plymouth. And they are going to allow for that substitution to come in. Plymouth is chomping at the bit. They want to get it going. It's like you said, Coach. You want to get one right away, even the score. Get on neutral ground again. They're anxious. Officials really allowing for some They're letting play, play a little, today. Yeah, had merch by the collar there. Which isn't a bad thing. Come, come playoff times, merch pokes it away, and Oz are unable to keep it in on the sideline here. I don't think Plymouth will mind that to let him play. They've played like that before. They could play tough. Can it throw coming in? Here's Nate, Nathan Maves Moore contributing immediately, but. Again, his feet go out from under him in this weather. The field is wet now. The field's certainly becoming an issue for both teams. Low shot coming in, and, and Kennett wisely taking shots on, on Donahue because knowing that it's going to skip off that wet grass. Exactly. He's got his work cut out for him today. Bobcats looked like Nolan was trying to do the same thing early to start the game. It's Costa on the pursuit here. Keeps it in. It's they're gonna call him for call the push off. Pushing off as Costa was looking to attack on the play, and it's gonna be a Bobcat free kick coming up. He's a very poised freshman, contributing all year. Again, another product of the youth program. All playing over on 175 at Reese Field. What a great venue that is if you go Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning. Nolan is going to look to take the kick coming into the box. And it's going to be a high shot, a direct kick coming from Nolan, looking to take a shot. And not a bad thing, having your best player be aggressive on that shot, unable to keep it down. They've made him in the past. That's a makeable shot. Goalie could slip easily. The goal kick coming up here for Kennett. And as McLaughlin will. Here comes McLaughlin. Back in the game. Nathan right Maves Moore with a solid contribution. While well, Daniel gets it figured out. I, I'm, my guess, maybe mouth guard, but not sure. I know everybody required to wear a mouth guard. Costa takes that one off the chest and. He's getting keep, muscled keep there. Looking <laughs> to fight here, and he sure does. The bigger player, Kennett player, shielding the ball. Great defensive move right there by Liam Reese. What a great steal, great tackle. So 
Canada looking to attack here. Barker's just going to kick the ball out of bounds and allow for his defense to catch up. Good move. Kennett on the attack, sending another ball into the box. You're right about one thing, Coach. You send it in there. It takes that funny skip off the grass. And we've got a through ball coming up for Nolan, unable to control it. I don't know if that was a pass back or... It looked like he was trying to step over that and allow for it to go through and hit his, clipped his heel. And we got another dangerous corner coming up for Kennett. 27-23 into the game. All right, boys. Eagles leading 1-0. A Kennett corner kick coming up. No accidents here, Dylan. Nice and easy. Good D. Eagle kick comes into the box. Another good ball. In control, and it's a high kick. A dangerous, dangerous play there inside the 18. When you misplay that initial ball, all bets are off off on, as to what can happen with it. Bounces around in there like a pinball machine. Ball That's what happened to the first squirted, score. Squirted back to the open player and leave that open player was the dangerous number 14, Bryce Harrison for Kennett, probably their best player in the middle of the field. Big Donahue kick coming up right to midfield, controlled by Mersh. And gonna be kicked out of bounds by Kennett. Three ball for Kenneth has on the pursuit here. Lucas Johnson is going to be able to control this and clear the ball out. Bobcat defense doing a nice job. Through ball here coming up for Kenneth in the box as it bounces around. It's a great scoring opportunity for Kennett. A good no call because they haven't called it yet. They had Connor taken down in the box twice, so that's okay. They still had a good shot on goal there. A good shot on goal. I believe that got tipped, so it's going to set up a dangerous Kennett corner kick coming up. This is a senior team for Kennett, but there's three sophomores out there for them, so they look promising for having a core group. Low kick comes in, it's going to be sent out by McLaughlin. Rain is easing up a little, I think. It's all being sent back into the 18. Couldn't really finding something and Looks like they're just going to continue to send that ball in and see what type of bounce it takes. Yeah, Kennett's uh, playing a good possession game right now. Ross is going to send Nolan out to the corner flag here. Nolan in pursuit. And the ball is just going to get kicked out of bounds by the Kennett defender. Ross has plenty of time. Going to drop it back to Ross, who's got everything in front of him. going to put the ball through the Kennett defender's legs and going to be dropped in the box. And they got a Bobcat corner or a penalty kick coming up, a push in the box. Is that a late call? And it was a late call, but I believe it was a good call. Nolan put the ball through the Kennett defender's legs and he was in pursuit of the goal with about four Bobcats looking to converge on the net. It was a late call by the official, but I believe a good one. Well, one out of three is not bad. He's been down there three times and had to get up off the ground three times. This isn't always a gimme either. The sophomore, Lucas Johnston, is in to take the penalty kick for Plymouth and even the score. Cameron Labrie, senior goalie for Kennett. And here comes the kick. It's going to be a kick out. It's going to be a Bobcat goal. 1-1 one, one scorer, Lucas Johnston. Still hold my breath on those, as easy as they look, because it wasn't too long ago, a few games ago, Coach, that um, Plymouth missed three penalty kicks. <laughs> I hope that's not going to be on, as, the, on as, the 
broadcast, but that happens. As you, as that you happens. said, it is harder than it looks. And But a great goal by Lucas Johnson to great even goal. it in. Great attack by Connor Nolan in the box, and I believe it was a great call by the official. He did have a step and was taken down. Nope, that was a good, uh, good finish by the sophomore. It's going to have a bright future for this club. You know, I, I, I've got to think the relentlessness by the freshman, Devlin Costa, so far to start this game has been a big reason why the Bobcats have been able to attack the net. He's been pushing so it. So far, and he really did on that play as well. And wisely gets the ball to, to Nolan. The two of them have worked great so far this season. Freshman and senior, nice to see. He fits in so well, Devlin. He's very experienced skill set. Lachlan sends it in. Ross is there, unable to put his foot on it. It's a great ball. Osner in pursuit of that and just barely missed it to be able to deflect that one into the net in a 1-1 game here. We've got about eight minutes to go in the first half. That was a great ball. Costa tips that one up Costa to Nolan. He's got running one. room, has a step inside the net again. They are going to muscle him all day, it looks they like. They are trying to take him They are going to muscle ball. him all day. Ross are coming a high kick. Just floats high of the net. Connor's bouncing around in there, but he has no quit in Connor. He's the toughest guy on the field every match he plays. So he will, uh, it'll pay off. He's going to wear him down, I think. Kenneth sending two to three guys on him every time he has the ball wisely. Wisely. And uh, Kenneth now back on the attack. And Bobcat defense having nothing to do with that. Come on, defense. <laughs> 14 here for Kennett. Nice move Very by Kennett. Nice move. They're going to send that ball back in the box. And Rosner there on the play. And Donahue's going to pick that one up wisely to call him off and allow for the big kick to send the ball back into Kennett territory. The 34 minute mark. One to one. So we got a little breathing room, like you said earlier. Just even it up and start a new match. Ball skips past the Kenneth defender. Kenneth goalie out of his net. And he's going to just knock it out of bounds. One on one match there. That's a 50 50 ball. Sure is. And he took him out. Good for Cameron Labrie coming out. Bold move. And a call that never gets called on the goalie. That's that, okay. <laughs> doesn't get called on the goalie? That's good. He's vulnerable. And it was a 50-50 ball. As both, both guys fighting for the ball here. We got a call coming up. It's a good call by the official. They're playing physical. And, and you know, they have allowed that early to start the game. The officials looking like they've got to maybe clean it up a little bit here. Both guys playing. He's going to move this one back. I'm not sure if that's where it happened. He did kind of horse collar him on that, but you know, you let him bounce around is one thing. Holding him and uh, preventing him from forward movement, no good. Lachlan sends you that one call in. Those. looking to flick it on, and Kenneth clears the ball. Charlie Carpenter, just a sophomore, too, really showed up the last half of the season, making a great contribution. Good tackle there. So that ball tipped. Good tackle by McLaughlin, but it's going to be Kennett ball. Kennett throwing here, looking to attack. Probably going to send one into the box here. Going to be give and go in the box, and it's going to be shot wide. It's going to set up a Bobcat goal kick. He got in there too easy on that, and uh, Plymouth better make that adjustment. Allowing for offensive players to run by the defense there. Yeah, it was wide open. Bobcats getting lucky. So the Donahue goal kick. It's going to be a high kick out to the left side, controlled by Kennett Head. And plenty of room here for the Bobcat defense. Here we go, Liam. He's going to keep it in. And plenty of running room here. Sends the ball up to Nolan up top. There you go. No one here. The rain really starting to, to fall here. 
coming again. And the low shot is going to be wide for another Bobcat goal kick. Well, if you're not running around at this time, you're pretty cold because <laughs> it's uh, just got a text from Camp Sinclair. We, many years ago, started up the, the program back in 1990. <laughs> Donahue goal kick coming up. And both teams fighting for it. Kind of controls it. Bobcat defense really having nothing to do with that. And they're going to send Nolan, who has some running room. And he looks to go one-on-one. -on -one. He is going to attack here out to the left side. And he's going to get tripped again, but no call. This one's going to be sent over the top to Kennett. Here comes Carpenter. Carpenter doing a nice job on the And the, the rain is coming down hard now. Doesn't look like Connor's going to get too many calls down there, but he's game. No, but the last one resulted in the first score for the for Plymouth, so. Is this dangerous ball into the box for Kennett? Sent out. Now he makes a nice play to keep that ball going across the six-yard box. Fabulous. Great play by Donahue. Quite the Booming. leg on him. He's going to send this one all the way down as Booming no one kick. looks to control it. And ball just taking so many difficult skips out there right now. Really looks to be frustrating. No one. So we're about 38 minutes here in the game. 1 1 score. Let's go, move, Black. Let's go. It's a tough hard fought game. Both sure sides. is sending Costa over the top and the Kenneth defender gets his head on it. That would have resulted in a foot race for Costa. Costa is really pushing the offense today. Sends Nolan. Nolan has the ball in the box. It's going to be a low shot and stopped by the Kenneth goalie. Again, set up by Costa. Costa again is a slew of bodies fly for both teams. Slow to get up. Kennett on the attack here. Too easy. The box going to be offsides on Kennett. Slipped in there. That's why it was easy. It was offsides. Bobcat defense holding strong there, holding their line and forcing Kennett to be offsides. They see that late call. Late, another late call by the officials as they are trying to clean it up a little bit, I think. And the Kenneth defender came in over the top and took a that was Plymouth it. player out. And they're going to give Plymouth a free kick here right at midfield. Dan McLaughlin's got a cannon for a, a leg here. Good Send ball. This one in. The ball takes a skip in the box. No one there. And it's going to be cleared out by Kenneth, setting up a Bobcat corner. Another great opportunity by Plymouth. And that's going to end the half. What a hard fought half. One, one score hard here. Hard fought half. We will come back. We will bring you the second half action of this first round the same playoff thing. game in Division Two. Okay. I love it. The Bobcats coming out of the half here, looking to attack. Nolan sends the ball deep into the box, and it goes out of bounds. It's going to set up a Kennett goal kick. And Paul, we've got. A 1-1 score here, keys to the Bobcats in the second half. Oh, we got a new game, and they got to take advantage of all the scoring opportunities before the weather really decides. The refs are letting them play, so uh, they have to continue to press. Another late call, I think, Coach. We've had about four late calls by the officials today. I, I believe that they're the right calls, as long as they're getting it right. And this is going to set up a, a Bobcat set piece here that's probably about 30 yards out from the net. I think it's only fair. You have a scoring opportunity. You can't uh, impede impede the player. And uh, 
late call or not, you got to make the call. They got a senior goalie, Cameron Labreeze, having a great game in goal. Johnson going to set over it, and it's going to be a high kick by Nolan. He's going to sail out of bounds, set up a cannon goal kick. Bobcats uh, really have been in attack mode for the majority of the game here. And again, it is a 1-1 score, but I would not say it should be. Kenneth scoring off a corner kick there in the first half. And Lucas Johnston penalty kick set up the 1-1 score. Well, Bobcats really first to every ball so far here to start the half. Right. And here's the freshman. Nobody there on the he other end. Duly noted, he's really taken charge offensively <laughs> and uh, shown his skill set as a freshman. He's going to need some more meat on those bones, though, coach. No one looking Connor at the attack the... as he steps out, and Kenneth's going to clear it. Now, as we said, the Eagles really have been aggressive on Nolan today and physical with him, and certainly is the way to play him. And he certainly can give it back. Yep. As we know, a very physical player, very skilled physical player. As the flick back for Ken is going to send the ball to the corner. And they're on the attack for the first time here in the half, and Donahue coming out, and he's going to easily get that one. Donahue slips on the kick. It tells you what the conditions are like, so you got to be careful. It might not be the prettiest goal. The ball is, I mean, a lot of divots coming out of the grass here. It is a wet field. People slipping all over the place. Yes. Both teams having to deal with it. Talking to a couple of the Kennett fans during the break. And they know and expected it to be a tough game because Kennett and Plymouth just play tough games together. Close calls and tough ones. So Kennett must be encouraged. They got a halt just a half. They're all tied up. And it's going to be a it's a whistle. It's a good call. Up here and a it's good Connor, call. Connor trying to take the defense. No one, no one looking to get that ball back. And a good call by the officials sending free kick in. Costa and Nolan are on the attack. Can a player in pursuit here is. Why is he going to keep the ball out of bounds? Liam Reese has been limping around for majority of the game out there, hoping he's okay. It's a good clear. He was lucky. It's a good clear out. Kennett is looking a little more assertive. Pressuring. Dylan's got to come out for this. I don't know why Dylan didn't come and get that. Reese is going to send that I always think it's a lot easier than putting the offense down there. And the rain is coming down almost sideways now. It's got to be 32 degrees. It's picked up and a nice chilly fall day. <laughs> it's tough conditions for these kids. Tough conditions. It'll certainly be one to remember for them. Can a player takes a dive in the box and doesn't get the benefit of the call. And Costa has the ball at the sideline. Play through the whistle. I don't get that pass back. Through ball offside. No, oh, we have a whistle. As the Kenneth player was a step off sides. Cat line able to pull him off. Good call. That's why he was wide open. Come on, Dylan. Good Donahue clear out. was there on the back side. Looked like he was going to be able to make a play on the ball. And after the last kick, slipping and falling, he takes a couple steps and able to keep it up. Two-handed push. Bobcats looking to get going quick. Another Rocco's going to send 50 -50. it in. There's a good ball. Received by the Kenneth goalie. Connor Nolan was right there. Carpenter going to wisely kick the ball out, let his defense catch up. Midfielders get back. I got to believe uh, Kenny Wheeler and Casarino and Havy and Dave McKenney and those coaches put their heads together. Came up with a strategy for this half. Ball being sent back in the box for Ken Rosner clearing it out, winning the 50 50 head ball. Shot coming up for Kent's best player just outside the box, and that ball sails high. 
Getting a little company in the booth here, which is always fun. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be back here Saturday with a big crowd. That would be our hope. Of course, the winner of this four seed versus 13 seed will play two o'clock on Saturday versus the winner of Trinity in Portsmouth taking place today. Trinity being the five seed, Portsmouth as the 12 seed. Well, Ball getting sent in the box and Costa in pursuit. Boy, he's kept him busy. He is a very skilled offensive player. He's keeping these guys busy, setting up Connor. Nice pass. He loops back around the middle. Gonna send it out to the oh, outside. Good idea. Bobcats really looking to control possession here more in the second half than they did in the first. Kennett just going to clear it out, and Charlie Carpenter in pursuit. And he's just going to clear it out. Good move by Charlie Carpenter, playing his safe. 25's got a lot of speed for Kennett. back and allowing to use the throw in almost as a corner kick as Costa in pursuit here unable to get break loose to send the ball up for Nolan. It seems like they're waiting to break loose with the offense all game. Ball's going to take a skip. The ball is skipping all over. In as Nolan able to keep that ball in play on the attack. Ball being shielded. What a great play. Ball going to get sent into the box. Nobody on the other end. Good attempt. Kennett looking to clear it out. Looks as though the adjustments mostly by the in the second half for Plymouth was just getting control of the ball and trying to keep it down. And then using the big moment to attack up front using Costa and Nolan. Well, they've already had a couple examples, a couple of chances, I mean. But Kennett is playing confident. And they're... Uh, so Plymouth again is on the attack here in the second half like they were the majority of the first half. Ebner is going to use that throw in to find McLaughlin. And the rain continues to come down like heavy right now. It's coming down even heavier than it was. So this is going to be, uh, it could get ugly. The boys can't keep their feet under them. Ball's going to sail out of, over that the fence. That ball just went over, knocked Danny Carey's crutches out from under him. Again, a starter down, Danny Carey not playing today. Isaiah Vesey's out with a broken arm. Kennett going to send this ball deep into Bobcat territory, and it's going to result in a Kennett corner kick, which is how they scored their only goal of the game so far. Always dangerous. <laughs> Plymouth got to get the good defense going and really mark up. Mark up, but you did notice earlier the uh, height advantage it looks like Kennett has. Ball Number 11. In. Kennett there on the other end, and who was that? The Bobcat defender there. Lucas, slipping by Lucas Donahue. Johnston. Lucas Johnson saving a goal. Nolan getting back on sides in pursuit here, attacking. Very Get physical on that. Uh, here comes Mersh. And a good tackle. Nolan back on the ball. It's going to squirt out to the goalie. And Lucas Johnston just saved a goal what for Kennett. A great defensive stand. That <sighs> thus far being the play of the day for Plymouth. I agree, and I hope it gives them some momentum. As both teams fighting hard with the ball, advantage being given to Johnston. Seems like the referees are holding on to the whistles here, Coach. Not a, not a terrible thing. Letting yeah, them play. Both teams playing within the rules, playing physical, but playing hard. And Good tackle Mersh by takes Mersh. takes that one away from Kent's best player. He's going to send the through ball out that's going to get deflected. Carpenter's going to play that one out, unable to trap that one down. Here comes the big throw for Kennett. Out to the corner. Johnston there. And he's going to keep it out. They're messing around with the ball in the box. 
They're just going to clear this one out. A little dangerous there. I don't Play think that was a good series. That's not what Plymouth wants to do. It's giving Kenneth some confidence. And, the last and that really didn't pay off. Up, ball being sent in. Right. Plymouth needs to get control of the ball here as Nolan finally has it. He's going to send Rosner out to the left corner. Rosner's got the speed. Come and get it now. And he's going to send this one into Good look in the middle. Got it just outside the 18, looking to attack. Merce traps it down. Shot coming up. There's a bouncing ball. Guys are playing hard. Guys are playing hard. Merce wanted that. Ball took off on him. going to result in the Kennett goal kick. Referee's talking to the players, trying to keep them uh, focused. Sam Emmer's going to win that one. Here comes Costa to attack. Keeps it up. Needs a little help inside the box. Nice slide by Cameron Labrie. He's having a great day in goal. Playing very well for Kennett. He says some real challenges that he's... Uh, been able to hold on to it. And a nice kick by him will be sent out by Johnstone and controlled over here to the sideline by Ebner. There you go, there you go. Good idea. What a great pass. And that's going to be cleared out and set up a Bobcat throw in. Looks Ian, like an opportunity to send Noel over the top. Here comes Kennan on the attack. And McLaughlin is looking to screen him out, and that's going to set up a free kick here for Plymouth coming up. Wow, he played that pretty smart. Had them kick it out, so they weren't looking at another corner. I think you're right, Coach. That corner, defensive play by Lucas Johnston. So far, I've been the play, play of the game. game. Play of the game. Ball was Headed play of the game the that really could have changed things for uh, the outcome. It was a great defensive play. They're going to send a ball over the top to Nolan. He's got two guys to beat. And he's got room into the 18 open guy. Ebner on the other end and probably needed one more touch for the goal. Exactly. He's just a sophomore. He had it. He just kicked it, didn't want to lift it. He could have held up on it one. He'll do that next year. He'll take a little more time. Great setup by Connor Nolan. It's the wide open Ebner in the box. They certainly have found something being able to send Costa and Nolan over the top. And Kenneth, offensive player, looking to get across there. He's going to kick it out of bounds. It's going to be a Bobcat goal kick. Kennett is still going after it. They're still looking for an offensive surge. Playing very confidently. Ebner frustrated with himself on that one. I don't think he had much reason to be. He was running towards the net. That ball behind him a little bit. Looked to control it. Unable to do so. The best scoring opportunity for the Bobcats so far today. A great setup by Connor Nolan. Ebner wishes he had that back, but 10th grader, he's all right. He'll put that in next year, or maybe Saturday. Marsh is going to continue playing the ball here. He's just getting muscled. To and needs to keep playing, not get frustrated. Carpenter has the attack here. Wow. And no call. It's going to be a Bobcat throwing. Ebner. Going to drop it back. Bobcats are going to control it to the middle. Touch there to Costa is going to roll out of bounds. Devlin Costa continues to be a thorn in their side, and he's only a freshman, having a great game. I would say him on the attack has the word to describe as relentless today. And relentless. He's, they, he's, uh, they've had to key on him in the second half and setting up some opportunities for Nolan. He's going to control this one. He's got some full room in front of him. He's going to keep attacking. What a great Inside move. the box. Had some running shot on net. Ball back for Goal, Bobcats! 
I think that's the play that's of the game, be Coach. That's going a Costa goal. What a great play. And the freshman delivers, taking the running room and cutting it back and scoring the left-footed goal that took a Bobcat bounce into the net. What a start to his career at Plymouth Regional as a freshman star starring in his first tournament game. Outstanding goal, outstanding patience. Took that extra step with the one touch and sent it through. And again, I think the conditions, Cameron Labrie fell down, but that's uh, a great goal. So two to one, the score of the two previous games played in the regular season by these two teams. Both those games played in September. And Bobcats. In summer-like conditions. <laughs> the Bobcats will look to need to keep attacking here as they have yes, a team that's kind of broken down and I agree. have seen something in the second half. I agree. They should keep the pressure on, continue to be relentless. A lot can be said about the Bobcat defense today as well. Yeah. As they really have been smothering. This ball's going to be played to cost in the middle. They're going to be sent out. It's going to be a throw in for yeah. Plymouth. Plymouth has him on the run. Ebner's going to play it to the corner. Back to the middle, nobody there, and Labrie's going to gather that Good idea. That one. Good idea. Good idea. Sideways rain falling here. Again, a cold, wet fall day. Ebner plays that one in the middle to Mersh. Plymouth remaining patient. Nice pass. And Nolan there. Nolan steals the it. Pass. Nobody on the other end. He's going to cross the ball. Nobody there. Come on. Got to get a hold of myself here. That was Auckland. Another good pass to Connor, who takes Nolan's it away. Still Come fighting, on. And they're going oh. to give, call this one on Kennett. Oh. Excuse me, on Plymouth. And it's going to be a Kennett kick. Interesting call. Both teams fighting. Looked Interesting as call. had the advantage, and it's going to send it to be a Kennett kick. I thought that was Connor's call, but that's okay. The, Nolan Costa really attacking up front, and nobody on the other end. The rest of the midfielders and forwards for Plymouth need to get in that box. It does look like Plymouth hungry. is a lot more in control now, Nolan's going to flick that one in the net. It's one-on-one -on -one here. Yeah. Nolan's got room. He's going to pop one in the net. It's going to be a that goal. There's your senior captain. There's your leader. Taking matters into his own hands, making sure it happens. Connor Nolan. Relentless pursuit. A lot of what uh, Devlin learns from him is going to be of great use to him in years to come. But Connor Nolan, with his, I believe, 27th goal, just having an outstanding year. A one on one with the goalie results, and Nolan winning the battle. And Bobcats lead 3 to 1 here now. Takes charge every game. Every game. And here's Mersh now. They here might comes Mersh. And he's going to be taken out from behind. It's going to be a Bobcat call. A good call by the official. An easy one. Hopefully, Kennett will uh, maintain composure and not get too uh, upset about it. That's going to be the key for Plymouth as well, is maintaining composure throughout the course of the game. and Continue to play smart and be patient. They're going to bring this one to they the have, midfield. They have command of the game now at the 60-minute mark. And... We have nobody defending the right side of the field. The shot's coming up from McLaughlin. It's going to be high. And a goal kick for Kennett. Hard keeping that ball down. And the Kennett Eagles look a little bruised and battered here as they have just given up two goals. Bobcats lead 3-1. to one. Somebody warming up on the sideline. Who is looks that? like maybe Josh Johnston. A walk-on. He's had a great contribution this year. <laughs> I like it. These guys are boxing out there. Ball's going to be sent out. Johnston in pursuit. And they're going to call Bobcat defense on the shield. It's going to be a quick restart for Kennett. They have a ball in the box. Ball bounces around. Kennett goal. And the that sure shield. happened fast. Coming in, called by the official, a quick restart by Kennett. 
results in the second goal of the game for them, and that's going to make it a one-goal game. That quick start really can get you off guard. And wisely a, a is. quick start really got Plymouth off guard. In this game, you cannot complain about the officiating as you have the option to start whenever you want. And Kenneth Player played it into a box. It was one-on-one -on -one with the offensive player and Donahue, and the offensive player wins that matchup. Three to two, Bobcats lead. And Nolan's gonna send this one out to the right corner flag. Ebner in pursuit. And it's gonna be kicked out of bounds. It'll be a Bobcat throw. I think that was their forward. Lee Dennis, number 25. Senior for Kennett, Lee Dennis, number five at 25, I think scored that goal. Okay, we've got a kick, free kick coming up for Kennett. All sent to the left corner flag. And Carpenter's gonna knock that one out of bounds. Kennett throw coming up, quick restart for them coming. And we've got a whistle and a sub for both teams, and that is gonna be Josh Johnston. And then for Connor Nolan. Checking in the game for Connor Nolan. Well, it looks like Kennett has new life. They feel energized. They do. Have they're thinking they're back here. in the game. They know they play this uh, Plymouth team crazy. And it's going to be headed out by Mersh, and it's going to be a Kennett throw. A quick throw is sent to the corner. Lachlan's going to play that one, and it's going to be a goal kick. They're going to call it corner. And the other official looking for help as that ball was cleared out. Looked like it was hit out by Kennett, no? And it was cleared out by Plymouth and went out the Kennett foot. It's right in front of us, and they're going to award Kennett the corner kick. Another quick restart by Kennett. Cross coming in. And nobody there on the other end. Ball bouncing around the box, and whistle coming out. And it's going to go for Plymouth. That was another crazy exchange in the box down there. Anything can happen. I think it was a good call by the official. Plymouth defense is standing strong. They maintain composure because Eagles looked energized. 63 minute mark, about 15 minutes left. 17 minutes left or so, depending on what the officials want to give for extra time. And Plymouth needs to calm things down and right. get the ball back the way they were playing it early. So Rosner has it. Sends it up to Costa out the left corner flag. It's one on one. Costa and the goalie. Ball tipped out. Has an open net. Sends it into the box. It'll be a goal. My God. That was fantastic. A McLaughlin goal. The assist like coming from Costa. Just fantastic. It looked like Devlin was waiting for him. Perfect timing. Came across. Cameron Labrie out of the goal is already committed. And another great comeback by uh, the Plymouth Bobcats. And Devlin Costa. Just showing up big really today. Done Just showing up big today. So happy for Devlin. Bobcats lead four to two here. Opening round playoff game. What a great game to watch. I might have to watch this on TV, I think. <laughs> and Costa again here looking to attack. Relentlessly, as you noted earlier. <laughs> They are not letting up. Mersh is looking to shield that one out, and this is going to be a good call by the official. It's going to be a free kick just outside the box. Good enough. Good enough. A Rosner free kick. Bobcats clinging to a 4-2 to lead. Rosner sends this one in. Ball headed up high. In comes Mersh, right to the goalie. Wonder the reasoning of having Nolan over there on the sideline has to do with the yellow card rule and hopes that he doesn't get one more. Is that Connors? No, no, this this one not, but his, his next one suspends him for a game. And so that you wonder if that's why he's over there on that sideline and in a 4-2 game here, playoff game. And what's not a terrible move? Make sure he's available for your playoff game. I wish I was aware of the rules as you are. I thought it was a clean slate starting playoffs. I thought so too. 
Oh my goodness. The, okay. Coach Ken Wheeler. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that alone. <laughs> oh. Wise move minutes. by Ken Wheeler. Ken Wheeler, a terrific coach. And Ebner here looking to attack. And the breeze is going to scoop this one up. You know, 14 minutes to go. Bobcats hold on to a 4 2 lead. A light rain now. What, uh, what, what do the Bobcats need to do to hang on to this victory? No silly calls. No silly calls against them, especially in the box. Solid defense. Auckland's going to send this one out to the And they're right still looking line. to attack. You have to continue to attack. A great ball there. Nice ball by Rosner. Well, we're pretty sure that the Kennedy Eagles aren't going to give up. So you got to continue to apply pressure. Look at this, and another comes great Mersh ball. inside the box, it's going to be a low shot, sails wide left. It's going to be a Kenneth Eagle goal kick. He's been a force in the middle all day as well. Tyler Mersh playing very hard, running through every 50-50 ball. They've got a solid defensive line in the back with those three. I think they're going to be pretty Costa. okay. Here Costa comes looking to attack here. God, he is tough. Tough freshman. He's got some nice moves. Ball in the box, bouncing around. Kenneth clears it. It's going to be an eagle. Eagle ball? Play an eagle throw in. <laughs> Both teams excited, wanting to win badly. We know that. We've seen both teams playing physical at times. Well, if they're playing anybody else but Kenneth, I'd like to think 4-2 is going to be a nice, solid hold-up, <laughs> a score that can hold up. But Kenneth shows up. Quirky things happen. I know Plymouth has been playing very well as of late, and I think they're playing with confidence, still looking to score. Costa attacking, taking across the box, putting a shot on net. That Costa, again, drawing four defenders. And Carpenter's going to send, oh, that was, <laughs> send a ball in the box, a good shot. Yep, you could take that skip you mentioned in this wet grass, and you never know, the goalie could even go down. They of continue course. to apply pressure, Plymouth, and you have to do that. Keep these guys on their heels. Bobcats leading 4-2, about 11 minutes left. This is the first ever home playoff game on this field. And I've been a good one so far. Look, Bobcats looking to hold on. Beautiful venue. I'd like to get back here Saturday. It'd be a fantastic afternoon. Last time Bobcats in the playoffs, remember they upset Lebanon on the road in the first round. And uh, that, that a big game, of course, reverse rules. I believe they were the 12 seed and they upset the exactly. 5 seed. Exactly. The Bobcats have set piece coming up here. Low kick into the box. Rockland battling it. Mersh on the shot coming in. Placed right at the 18. Ball bouncing around. Nobody able to get a foot on it. That extra dribble in there. Kenneth still looking to attack. They're going to send it up to the front. And great tackle by great Johnstone. Job. Great defense. Johnstone. He really has anchored great that defense. defense back there. And he sends it forward. And it's going to roll out of bounds. That's a coaching decision that really has paid off today, putting him back on defense. It's just without Danny Carey and without Isaiah Vise. VC. They put uh, Johnstone back there. He's playing like a veteran. We have Tucker Boyd checking in for Josh Johnston, and Ebner will go out. And near side is number two, uh, Jake Little. Jake Little, good for him. Hopefully they could finish up strong. Costa still with the ball, bouncing around the box, and good clean tackle. I don't know if that's the right call for the Bobcat official. 
looked like a clean tackle. Nonetheless, it's going to go Bobcat way. Nice. At this point, we're working against the clock mostly. Or two, Rosner and McLaughlin talking things out. The Kennett wall will be set up right at the 18 yard line. Ross is going to step over. The block with low shots coming out right at Labrie. Handled nicely. The Kennett wall split. Right to Labrie. Veteran goalie. What a great shot, though. Onstone's going to win that one. Possession now, boys. Possession. Smart defensive possession. Continue to attack. Look at Devlin. Costa has really done it all today. For he's, had a, he's had a stellar day. A goal and an assist. <laughs> Tucker Boyd. Play that one outside and allow for the Tucker Boyd. D up and now. Midfielders to set things up. Can it still on the attack? Really starting to reach desperation mode with probably about seven minutes left. Boyd's going to try to play this one out. It's going to be a Bobcat goal kick. So we got to let the clock be our friend here. Not worry about scoring again, but maintain good possession soccer. Good football. Spread the field. Dylan's had a great game in goal. Don't forget the Bobcats also saving a goal on the goal line. Lucas Johnstone on Outstanding. the corner kick. That could have changed the tide. Clear it and really could have changed the absolute the momentum, momentum of the game. Could have changed. Two to one. Donahue's going to call everybody off and wisely take this one. Another hour, coach. We need lights on this field. <laughs> it is a dark, gloomy day. It's a little dark. But the game has moved along nicely. Jake looking to play that one over the top. They can it throw? 14, flicks over the top. Lucas there, as he has been all day long, and he's gonna play this one. Charlie Carpenter coming in. <laughs> Good physical play, letting him play. This is the guy who scored the last goal. And it's gonna be a corner in what has been really the biggest problem for the Bobcats all day long is defending these Kennett corner kicks. This is Lee Dennis, senior, number 25, waiting for this ball. Dennis sends it in the box. It, McLaughlin there on the other end, the high bouncing. Kenna has it, it goes right to Donnie, who got himself back in position. Oh, good job, good job, Dylan. And he's gonna take his time to clear this one out. We're looking probably about six minutes to go in the game. Bobcats leading four to two. Things well in hand, even with the subs. Giving his starters a little rest, and the subs are showing up, playing, playing well. Defense is shorted up at the end with Johnstone in the back. He's just doing an outstanding job. Great coaching call by Ken Wheeler. Costa still up front, working hard to attack the net, see if he can slip another one in for his second of the day. He does not run out of gas. He's getting pushed off the ball, but he stays on his feet. His balance is incredible as he gets knocked to the ground. That's unfortunate. 18. The 18 did not need to do that. Bobcat freshman certainly has been frustrating them on pretty much every end today. <laughs> All sent to the right corner flag. Cross coming in here. Nobody on the other end for Puma. And it clears it. One on one, Johnston there. And he's going to play it out to the outside. Deep possession. Not give the ball up. Instead of booming it out of bounds, he keeps possession. This turns into, with about five minutes left, turns into just about every warm up every soccer team in America uses just a possession game where you're just trying to keep it away and exactly. look for your opportunity to attack when you can. 
Play smart. Go Keep it cool. Restart. Ball was still moving, so they're going to send it back. Plymouth keeps composed. Kennett played well. They have no reason to be upset about anything today. They played a good game. Cameron Labrie had his challenges today, and uh, offensive contribution by Connor Nolan and Devlin Costa have been outstanding. High sailing ball is going to bounce back, take a tough bounce. Donahue there. He's going to allow it to come in the box. Able to pick it up with his hands coming off the head of the Bobcat player. Did he send that back there? He did. I don't he think did. on purpose, but the wet no? ball sent, went all the way back. It looked like he might have. I wonder. Of course, oh, Costa on the run here. One on one the goal eagle is going to get it in the box. And <laughs> Costa never gives up. Relentless pursuit all day. All over the head. Really, I think you've got to be impressed with what the Kennedy Eagles have done today, especially striking first and taking the one nothing lead and giving Plymouth pretty much everything they can handle today. No, I agree. Long bus ride down here. Facing a team they haven't beaten. They showed up today. You want to avoid injuries now. Just avoid the injuries. And starting to blow, we have an injured Kennett player down. Rolls up and pops up, and he's probably can't be much of a cramp today with this weather. He's limping off the field. Nice sportsmanship there. Seventy-eight minute mark. The clock stops that we have here. Bobcats leading four-two, and we are into the officials' time now. And Paul, if you had to pick a player of the game so far today, Jeez. who would that player be? <laughs> I think you picked him earlier, Coach, with your uh, noticing the outstanding contribution Devlin Costa has made all day. A thorn in their side offensively. They had to pay a lot of attention to him. Freed up the other guys. He ends up with a big goal. Uh, tremendous assist. He's had an outstanding game. You know, that, that goal that made it 3-2, to two, that really could have been a big difference. And with, with that, uh, that Ebner goal in the middle, or excuse me, the McLaughlin goal in the middle, Really right. making the difference and creating some room here as that ball bounces around the box and Boyd's going to try to clear it. And McLaughlin on the other end. Mersh fighting here. Mersh He's breaking send out. Rosner. Rosner has room. No call there. They are going to call off sides. Is that off sides? Look to be here, but... Well, Kennett's not slowing up. They're still pursuing. They got everybody down, looking to get another goal here. And finish their last game of their season very strong. Ian Barker, solid game today. Ian Barker sends the ball in the box. Roger on the other end and just wide. But what would have been the fifth goal on the day for Plymouth? That was right there. Plymouth continues to apply the pressure and maintain a great defensive wall. And all we're waiting for now is the final whistles from the official. And Johnston there on the other end, he's just going to try to play it out. And outstanding, he does. outstanding he's speed. He's been an anchor back there all day long. Outstanding speed. A great coaching decision. When you're down Danny Carey, who's a stalwart back there, you're down Isaiah VC, and you decide just to move one man over. What a difference he's made. Really has done a lot today. He's it's done Rosner. a lot. Here looking to attack, and he does. And it's a hand battle coming up top, and Rosner's still there. And we got a call coming up, and they are going to call it. <laughs> call it on Rosner. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. No injuries. Let's not have any injuries. Finish up strong. And if the Bobcats can hang on, 
The yeah, subs are doing well. They will face the winner of... What a feed. What a great feed. Shot coming in. It's a goal. Ebner, goal. Ebner. There's great composure by Ebner that time. Sent a great goal in. Cameron LeBree's not happy giving that one up. And Plymouth's going to add... What an outstanding goal, a great pass. The final goal here and make it five to two. I think, the, I think the pass came in from uh, Ian Barker. Great pass by Ian Barker to set that up. Ebner finished. A great pass and a great shot to a rocket on the top right corner by Ebner. I think Matt Rosner is down. He must have some uh, cramps. He's played hard all day. Yeah, he's sore. He can't get up. And Rosner down, and again, as I started to say, Saturday at 2 o'clock, the Bobcats are going to hang on, and they're going to face the winner of Trinity and Portsmouth, who are playing today as well. And Hope that game's going to be at home, and that's gonna... the beauty of getting that top four seed is you host your first two-round games. What a great way to start this field off. Are we going to have the weather? I think, I think we'll the have The weather some... will be a little nicer than this. That'd be outstanding. Couldn't get worse. What a great afternoon for Plymouth Bobcat. Plymouth players out there acknowledging the fact that they have sealed this one up. Again, we're into the officials time. We've got a whistle coming up here soon. Just waiting for it to start. That's going to end the game and great tournament. Great tournament game for uh, Plymouth on this home field. All Plymouth has to do now is allow for the clock to hit zeros. And the rain is coming down now. But with Ebner, a, f a tenth grader, Devlin, a freshman, they had a looking, bright looking future. And the official getting ready to blow the whistle, I believe, as he is over there. And it is going to be there it is. signified at the end of the game. And Plymouth's going to win five to two. They open up their first home playoff game on this field with a 5-2 victory over the number 13 seed in Kennedy Eagles. Paul, pleasure working with you today. They will we'll be back Saturday. My honor to be with the voice of the Bobcats. <laughs> we will be back Saturday. And a former soccer player himself who knows this game inside now. And, and Saturday afternoon will be a great venue. I think we'll get some of the old soccer players and maybe Cam Sinclair who started the program up here with uh, Jimmy Hogan. Maybe get Brian Biederman up here. Fantastic. Who you saw play. We will and see it's, uh, you Saturday at 2 o'clock. They play the winner of Trinity in Portsmouth. Thanks for listening and watching.